So what we are going to be focusing on is how we can prevent hackers from accessing our extranet content. There are many ways unauthorized users may attempt to gain access to your network. They may attempt to attack the user's password itself, uh, perhaps with a brute force attack. And for those of you who may not know, a brute force attack is a trial and error method used to obtain a password. Uh, in a brute force attack, automated software is used to generate a large number of guesses at the password. Uh, if you will, just picture a group of people who are repeatedly trying to ram a castle door until it cracks. Another way that uh, hackers may try to gain access is through your email, whether it's through a lost mobile device or uh, your users clicking on links inside of email. Your email could be the gateway for a hacker to gain access to your network. It is important, therefore, to take steps to prevent hacked email from allowing hackers to access your extranet. And lastly, for this webinar at least, um, we've all heard of uh, customer databases being stolen. So we're going to look at um, how our product can help you prevent, if your database does get stolen, to prevent those uh, passwords and emails being attained. And of course, this is all done through uh, SharePoint and Extranet Collaboration Manager. Um, in today's webinar, we're going to show you just how secure SharePoint Extranet against, how you can secure your SharePoint Extranet against threats using Extranet Collaboration Manager. Uh, so let's take first uh, take a look at the first way that hackers can gain access. When using SharePoint in conjunction with EXM to manage an extranet, your external users are stored in a SQL database and are managed outside of your Active Directory. The features we're going to show you today will walk you through how to secure your external users' passwords to safeguard hackers from gaining access to your network from these common password hacks. Also, we're going to look at the uh, max failed attempts, which is a feature inside of EXM. Uh, so hackers tend to run programs that enter stolen username and password details on tens of thousands of sites until it finally hits one. And so with this max failed password attempt, you can rest assured that your site will not be one of those sites that gets stolen, hacked into. Next, we're going to look at... Um, password policies. So since your internal users are stored in AD, you can kind of configure your passwords through Active Directory. But since your external users are stored in a SQL database, it becomes important to configure the rules around their passwords just as you would through Active Directory. Uh, this way you will ensure that your external users are creating passwords that cannot be easily exposed. And then we're going to look at multi-factor authentication. Uh, so even if the password is guessed or uh, cracked in some way, Unless the hacker has access to the second form of authentication, the hacker still will not gain access to your extranet. So let's take a look at how you can safeguard your extranet against these threats with EXEM. First thing we're going to do uh, is just kind of show you this is SharePoint um, under Central Admin. We're going to go out to General Application Settings. And then there's an Extranet Collaboration Manager menu here. We're actually just going to click on this password policy. And then while we go out here, we can select which web application we want to enforce these password policies on. And you can see that there are some default settings already in there. Let's go ahead and make some changes. So currently it's set to eight uh, characters long as far as the max, word, max password length. Let's just go ahead and change that. Let's make it 10. Um, and then right now it requires at least one numeric character. And you can see that a regular expression that is used for that, this code is right here. So let's just go ahead and require both an uppercase and a lowercase letter. And when I make that change, you can see the regular expression is, or the code is changed here, so that now uh, it will require an uppercase and a lowercase. Also on this one, we're going to look at the max failed attempts. So this is how many times can someone guess their password before their account becomes locked out. Currently, we're set to 10 because maybe our users are just a little more forgetful than normal. But if we wanted to, we could just easily uh, shorten that to 4. Once we have that done, we just press OK. And now, one of the features we want to show you, well, since we're real close here anyways, let's go out here to just general application settings once more. And we're going to click on that multi-factor authentication. Once again, I choose the web app I want to 
configure it for. And we can see that multi-factor authentication is already enabled for extranet.awbikes.com. Uh, when the code is sent out, it has 10 minutes before it expires. Uh, we could adjust that here very simply. Next thing I want to point your attention to is the fact that we have email set, and it is our default. You can use text messaging, so if you want to set up your users so that they have to receive a text message in order to be able to gain access, you can do that as well just by checking this checkbox. Uh, and you can give them two options at the same time, and you, and you can choose which one you want to set as default. Another option you can add is this uh, multi-factor caching, which means that once a user has uh, logged in with multi-factor authentication, you can set the number of days that that code will remain active until they have to log in once more. Okay, let's go ahead and save. And we'll jump back out. So let's go show ahead and show you what that looks like. We'll go ahead and go to a sign-in page. And again, this is just the default sign-in page that comes out of the box with Premier Point Solutions. Uh, if I go ahead and type in a username, you see that the email is checked already, so I can go ahead and request the code. If I don't request the code, I just try to enter a password. It won't even let me click into it until I've entered the passcode. So I can click Request. Then you can see that Sally is getting that request code. Now, this code is not capable of being copied and pasted, and this is for security reasons, because we don't want somebody just to be able to use script to paste in code and just try to, to uh, brute force this. So what we do is you do have to actually type it in. And uh, before, uh, you could not type in the password, now that we, we can. Okay, so that takes a quick look at some of the features that can safeguard you against the, you know, by using the max failed attempts, by using password policy, and using multi-factor authentication. Let's take a look now at another way that hackers can gain access to your network, and that's through email. Uh, so some of the features that EXCM has that we're going to look at is this one-time use URL, so that if a user um, receives an invitation to join your network, but they forget to delete that email, EXCM has taken safeguards to prevent that user from, or that email from being used a second time. Of course, you can always add yourself as a global CC or a global BCC, uh, so that all emails that go out, you'll see who has access to, which will help you to keep a better oversight of your emails. And of course, you can limit those invitations uh, based upon how long you want them to be active. So let's take a quick look at some of those. So what we're going to do, we're going to actually sign in using the Windows account. I'm just going to log in as the admin. And then, so let's go out real quick and take a look at some how you set these settings up on the background. And one of the first things we're going to look at, let's go ahead and set up that global CC. So if we go out here under mail settings, under global mail settings, And don't worry, it's working on it. I may have lost connection to my servers. See if I can jump back out real quick. Oh, no, it's back. Just taking a little while. Well, I was trying to come up, let's see if I can take a look at an email. Just as soon as I get ready to move off somewhere else, it comes back up. So you can see right now we have uh, Timmy set up as a global CC so that on any invitation that gets sent out, we'll see Timmy's email address show up. So if Timmy is someone with inside your organization, you can set it up so that they, of course, can be co copy, carbon copied or blind carbon copied so that they see every email that goes out.
Once that's done, we'll go out back under site settings. And we also talked about uh, limiting your, your invitations to be a certain amount of time. So let me show you how you set that up as well. We're going to go out under registration settings. And then under invitation registration settings, there's an invitation expiration link. So right now, we currently have our invitation set to three days. If for some reason the end user does not uh, respond to your invitation within three days, that link will no longer be active. So if someone were to gain access to your user or your, invit your invitee's email and try to register using the link inside that email, but it was after three days, then that invitation would no longer be acceptable. Okay, so let's just show you what all that means. So if we send out an invitation, and let's say we have a contractor that we're working with, and we need to give them temporary access to our extranet. I'll go ahead and type in the uh, email information. Click on save. And then we can see this is the invitation that comes in. This is a one-time use URL. So if this invitation were to ever to, um, let's say this East Noden doesn't uh, remove this email from their inbox, not like any of our users ever forget to delete items from their inbox, but if they did uh, and some user were to gain access to this email uh, and try to register using the same link, they would not be able to as this would have already been used once before. Oh, let's go back out here. Actually, I'll close this one. And let's just start it in private browser so we don't have any cookies that are getting in the way. And now let's try that registration once more. There we go. So now East Noden can come out here and of course the password we just made changes so if I were to you see there's a strength indicator there and it requires uppercase and lowercase. There we go. So it doesn't allow them to register until they've met that new password requirement there. So let's jump back out and I'll show you once more we have uh, at least one more way that hackers try to uh, gain access, and that's if what what if a user were to gain access to your database? Well, we've heard of major email organizations that have lost their their user database. If their passwords would have been salted and hashed, uh, and I just will take a uh, quick moment here to say these are not Waffle House passwords, so they aren't smothered and covered as well. They are just salted and hashed. Um, so when a password has been hashed, it means it has been turned into a scrambled representation of itself. Uh, a user's password is taken and using a key known to the site, the hash value is derived from a combination of both the password and the key uh, using a, a set algorithm. Salting is uh, simply uh, adding a unique random string of characters that's again known only to the site to each password before it's hashed. So uh, a password captured by EXEM adds a unique random string of characters to the password before using a key to scramble the password. Uh, so let's just kind of show you what that what that looks like. Uh, so if we go out here, take a look at our SQL database. Under our extranet directory, we have a table called membership. And you can see if I come out here and look under the membership, this is a password here. Uh, no, our users are not able to remember a string of characters like this. This is a, um, uh, a hashed password. And this is the salt that's being used for that uh, password. So you can see, even if someone were to gain access to your database, gain access to your extranet users, uh, of course, you know their passwords are salted and hashed in here, so therefore they cannot uh, grab the user's username and password and be able to gain access to your site once more. Well, as promised, we uh, try to keep it short and sweet for these uh, demos and these webinars. So uh, I kind of ran through that as fast as I could. Hopefully everything is not clear as mud. 
but that uh, maybe this is just a great way to introduce you into some of the features that EXM has to help you secure your extranet. Uh, we are going to move on to the question and answers section now. So if you have questions, please feel free to go ahead and uh, type those in. Uh, and I'll go ahead and while we're waiting those answers to questions to come in, I'll go ahead and show you our upcoming webinars. Give me one second here. So I do have some questions. Looks like <laughs> some people are having troubles gaining access to the webinar. Uh, we realized that there was access, uh, some issues there, so we'll be uh, sending this recording out to those of you who had signed up but did not have the ability to sign in. Uh, we do have a question here about our multi-factor authentication. Um, if we have customers that are in different countries, how do we handle text messaging? Uh, okay, so our uh, MFA feature does handle global text messaging. Uh, so if you do want to set up multi-factor authentication for users that are outside your base country, uh, our product will be able to handle that. Uh, depending upon countries, there might be some different rates that may apply, but uh, you can always contact us if you'd like to know more about the multi-factor authentication aspect of it. But of course, email will work, so if you are using only email, uh, you can also send those out to people of other inside other countries. Thank you. That's a really good question. Okay. Um, this one appears to be about the multi-factor authentication again, asking about the code that's sent out, um, basically based around the you know how, what's the security level of it. So we have had. Um, a team of uh, a couple different teams actually to test our multi-factor authentication, uh, some penetration testing. Uh, we have worked with uh, independent uh, contractors to see if we can uh, strengthen our um, MFA codes, and so we have uh, got done very thorough testing on that. Uh, if you would like to know specific information, uh, again, please contact me. I'll go ahead and pull up our contact screen next. Uh, go ahead and feel free to contact us. We're, uh, we'll be glad to reach out to you as well. Any additional questions? Okay. Well, if that's all, then we'll go ahead and end the webinar there, keeping it short and sweet. Hopefully, you'll be able to join us once again uh, for an upcoming webinar, I think in about another two weeks, about how you can uh, use EXCM along with SharePoint to uh, create a very secure extranet. Thank you very much.